Officer Ron. Yes. Hey, you're like a cop or something, right? Correct. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, do you ever write tickets? I've written, I've written a gang of tickets. Have you ever thought that some of the traffic laws are confusing? Yes. Well, guess what? Today on the show, we have the most confusing driving rules explained and explained from a member of law enforcement next on Men Are So Smart. Well, hello there. Welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I am Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. We are so glad that you've decided to spend a little time with us today. We hope you'll enjoy our show. Uh, if you do, you might want to check out our website, which is menaresosmart.com. Uh, you can find us on iTunes now in podcast form. Yeah, very exciting. Do a search for Men Are So Smart or Gallagher Entertainment. Either way, it'll take you there. Uh, our Facebook page is at Men Are So Smart. Our email addresses are Lou at Men Are So Smart dot com. And Ronnie at Men Are So Smart. Spend any time on the highways and it's clear that plenty of drivers don't understand some of the basic rules of the road. Yep. Uh, those are the ones you're usually screaming at. Yeah. If you're not sure. Uh, while laws can differ from state to state, there are some general traffic rules drivers often get wrong. So here's what we've done. We've compiled a list today for uh, the most confusing driving rules explained, and Ronnie's up first. All right. This okay. one, boy, it's expensive. If you get a ticket for this, it's going to cost you passing a bus. Especially a school bus. School buses, uh, uh, certainly. Uh, no question about this rule. When the red lights on a school bus are flashing, drivers from all directions are required to stop until the lights go out. But when it comes to a city bus, you're allowed to go around, uh, around one when it's stopped. Be sure to proceed with caution, of course, but be because people who have gotten off the bus may then be crossing in front of it. Now, on a school bus, at least in California, not only do they have flashing red lights, but they have a stop sign that pops out. Yeah. So if you're unsure, that stop sign is there to help you a little bit. I am guilty of this. It happened to me maybe six months ago, I guess it was. I was going down Alberta, going towards the Sacramento Airport, and uh, right in a residential area, a school bus had stopped on the opposite side of the, the street from me. Okay. I was here and they were over here like this. Right. And so it had come to a stop and it had the fly lights flashing. Um, and so I thought, I, I'm just gonna proceed with caution. Well, I'll tell you what, that bus driver had a conniption fit. Whoops. Uh, and flew out that stop sign right in front of me like I, he hadn't done it first. Oh, dang. And then he put it out there so that I was driving up, I saw it. Right. And I stopped and I just did one of these. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. So once again, these are rules that uh, are confusing to drivers. Now in California, even myself. Also, this one, if you're on a divided highway, so in other words, there's something separating one side of the road from the other, like an island. Oh, okay. A stripe wouldn't be considered a divided highway, but it, uh, an island or a fence or something like that would. If you have an, an island or a fence separating one side from the other. The only the traffic going in the same direction as the bus has to stop. Oh, oh, that's good. See, there's a little tip right there. That's why we have him here. You need to appreciate Ronnie. Thank you. The purpose, uh, the purpose of a traffic circle or what we call a roundabout, and they're becoming more and more prevalent all over all California. Yeah, uh, is to replace a four-way stop, but allow traffic to keep flowing. But driving in a roundabout can be nerve-wracking, especially if it's in an area you don't know well. The secret, yield to your left and know where your exit is. And if you mess it up, you can always go around the circle again. Yep. Once you're through the traffic circle, you know, it's it's no longer a problem. That left thing no longer applies. Right. All right? Yeah, you do have to be aware of people that are still coming around. They're not necessarily going to make the right to get out. They may be coming right back and around. And they may be just as confused as you. Yeah, and they are a little confusing at first. Yep. All right, next one. 
merging onto a highway. Pet peeve. Ooh, kills me. I, absolutely just nuts me up. Uh, the approach to a highway is called an acceleration ramp in most places for a reason. Uh, people are told, don't worry about your speed, just get into the flow and you can adjust your speed afterwards. Yeah. So true. Mm -hmm. um, people get unnerved by that, but it works very well when you're brave enough to do it. Uh, but if you're not able to merge, you should pull onto the shoulder until you see an opportunity to join the flow of traffic. What they can't do is just uh, is dead ahead and close their eyes and hang on for dear life. So you do, I mean, you got to figure the most people on the freeway are doing 65 minimum. Mm -hmm. When you, and the, the on-ramps are long enough, you should be able to get your car up to 65 miles an hour. Uh, if it's a super trafficy time of day and it's bumper to bumper, Okay, so all bets are off. All bets are off. You have to merge as as you can, but boy, any other time, uh, get up to speed, get on the freeway, and don't cause people behind you to slam on their brakes. You know, I don't think I told you this, but um, I do have a very tricky merge ramp on my way home from uh, Woodland, and uh, in this particular stretch of I five, there's always a lot of trucks. Yeah. A lot of trucks. And do you know the other day, as I was trying, and I, I swear to you, I was doing nothing wrong. I was getting up to speed, and there was a truck here, and this was the lane I was coming up on. Do you know he did this? Oh, wow. So as not to let me in? That's uncalled for. I literally, I didn't slam on the brakes, but I, I virtually had to completely slow down and let him go by. And I thought to myself, what if I hadn't? Right. That guy would have run me right over. Yep. What is a truck driver doing that for? Yeah, that's just let me in. Uncalled for. I thought it was. All right. Um, next up on our list of confusing driving laws: making a U-turn unless there's a posted sign prohibiting U-turns. You can make one. Yep. That said, it's not recommended that you do so on two-lane roads. But at intersections where there are multiple lanes, unless there's a sign, go ahead, but proceed with caution. This one, again, kind of a pet peeve a little bit. Uh, it's passing a bicyclist. Oh, that's dangerous. And because I ride a bicycle from time to time, it's, there's, it's a two-way pet peeve. Uh, what if you're driving on a curvy road and you come upon a cyclist? Mm -hmm. The general rule is that you should give the bicyclist at least four feet of space when you pass them. At least. Even if it means crossing the center line. Yep. But mm -hmm. if you can't give the cyclist that amount of space without interfering with oncoming traffic, you should yield to the cyclist until you can give them that space. Same rule applies with vehicles that stop frequently, such as UPS trucks or garbage trucks. Now, my biggest thing is I come across bicyclists that ride four wide. Yeah. They stretch right out into the traffic lane. That ain't a bike lane width. Uh, and you, you are forced to slow down or change lanes. Or kill somebody. Or run them over. Um, Highway 49, you're familiar with Yeah, with yeah, I rode a motorcycle up that once. It's, uh, it's a very hilly and curvy, very curvy road here in California. Mm -hmm. And it's very popular with cyclists because of the, it's challenging. Yeah, it is. It's, like I said, it's curvy and hilly. And so, which is fine. And there's not a lot of room. They only have about an 18 inch fog line on the side of the road. It's not even a bike lane, right. it's just a fog line. But yet, the bicyclists don't ride single file, they ride four wide. You're asking for it. And there are so many blind curves on Highway 49, mm -hmm. it's completely dangerous. I would love to, I, I would love to get out and give them a little piece of my mind, and tell them how stupid it is and inconsiderate, but you know what? It's it's just not worth it. No. At some point, they're probably just going to get run over, and then you say. And well, then where are you? Yeah, they were. They would be right, but right and dead. Yeah. 
Right and injured. Which would you rather have? Yeah. Uh, Ronnie, why is it that people who just take up bike riding think that they should put on spandex bicycle pants? <laughs> Why don't you work your way into that? Because it looks good. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'm telling you, you, they were not meant for you. Maybe in a year of riding bicycles. You might work up Yeah, there. but not right away. That's like people that go out and buy a tennis outfit. Oh, yeah. And a new tennis racket. Yeah. We're going to take up the sport and then they never even open the package. Right. All right. Making a ride under red. Now, in California, this is legal, but in other states, some other states, it's not. Again, unless there's a sign saying you cannot make a right on okay. a red at a particular intersection. On most roadways, if there's no sign that says you can't make a right on red, you should go ahead and do so. But there is one big exception. Yep. My town, New York City. Oh, boy. The Big Apple is the opposite of the rest of the world because... You're not allowed to make a right on a red unless there's a sign that says you can. Either way, you should still come to a full stop making the right on red uh, before making the right. It doesn't mean you just cruise right on through and make a right turn without stopping. I would have to say maybe in New York it's because of the amount of pedestrians. Traffic, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. traffic, traffic and the amount of pedestrians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, this one. When there's a pedestrian in the crosswalk. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and boy, you know what? It's at least once a week we have a pedestrian hit and killed and sort of like hit and run so many times. Yeah. And, uh, the general rule is that drivers must yield to pedestrians in crosswalks. That said, if people are standing on a corner and don't appear to be crossing the street yet, you should proceed with caution but you're not required to stop for them until they enter the crosswalk. Um, There's a little gray area there. Vicky and I, man, we saw this yesterday. Uh, we were up at Auburn Folsom and Greenback, and this guy, I'm not even sure he touched his brake. He made a right-hand turn on a red, and there was a guy going to go in the crosswalk, and had he not stopped, he would have got plowed over. Um I mean, the very first thing you have to do at a red light is stop. You can oh. only make a right on a red after you come to a complete stop. Gotcha. And pedestrians in the crosswalk. Uh, in California, the law is written a little bit uh, vaguely. It says you can't enter the, you can't cross that crosswalk as a driver until the pedestrian is no longer a danger. How far is that? Halfway. Do they have to be halfway? I or think so. On the other side. You're asking me. You're it, the cop. The the law doesn't state how far that is. It's just written vaguely enough. Um, and again, and this is uh, so bicyclists are considered vehicles. So if a bicyclist is in the crosswalk, do you yield for them? Well, here's my rule. Who has the bigger vehicle? <laughs> yes. And I don't mean... Right. <laughs> what I mean is your car is bigger than that bicycle, so you yeah. yield to them. Right. And obviously pedestrian, you know, they right. don't wear armor. I remember they had a commercial like that for yep. a while. Uh, they don't wear armor, so your car is much bigger than... So that's who has the right of way. That, you can never go wrong that way. No. If you're on a bicyclist... So the, the caveat would be a bicyclist that's walking his bike mm -hmm. in the crosswalk mm -hmm. is a pedestrian. A bicyclist that's riding his bike in the crosswalk is not a pedestrian. However, you still, you should give them the right of way. Well, yeah, because... They're going to be crossing faster than a, a pedestrian anyway. The crosswalk is to cross the street. Right. It's the safe zone. It's base. Yeah. Yep. Crossing railroad tracks. I saw a funny episode of that sure. show that I love ridiculousness oh yeah 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 i saw a funny episode about someone walking into one of these crossing arms <laughs> you know to stop when the gate is down and the lights are flashing by the railroad tracks but what if you're in an area that doesn't have those safety measures in place a lot of people especially in rural areas tend to not stop not look they just go those are the ones you see on tv I don't know if they expect to see or hear a train, but that's sometimes the problem. But it's still your responsibility to stop before you cross railroad tracks 
and check for any oncoming trains or vehicles. And I'll tell you that I work for a, uh, a welding supply company that has a fleet of trucks that deliver gases. Mm, yeah. And some of them more explosive than others. Uh, and so all of our drivers are required to stop at any railroad crossing, whether there's a train or not. School buses too. I think so. Yep, school buses mm -hmm. have to also. I think that's a good rule of thumb. I Stop, so you dumbass. Yep. Sorry. Because you know what? Not you. Crossing arms and lights may or may not work 100% of the time. That's right. So what does it hurt to stop and look both ways? And, and what then? if your power is out? Oh, boy. Yep. There's mm -hmm. another big thing we're going through right here in California uh, now. Yeah. All right, this last one. Okay. Waiting for a drawbridge. So we have one ice tree bridge. Oh, yeah, right, is right. A, is a, a river crossing. Right, I forgot. And they have to raise it to let big boats through. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have one here to deal with. Uh, this says it might seem like an inconvenience if you live in an area near the water and the drawbridge goes up at 7.30 in the freaking morning yeah, commute during time. rush hour. Mm -hmm. uh, but what many people don't know is that people traveling on waterways get to go before people on highways. Not sure if you knew that. No, I didn't. Uh, if the boat's coming up the river, it has the right of way. Uh, the drawbridge lifts are often scheduled for specific times every day so you can plan on plan plan around them still it's a good idea to be prepared if you ever get stranded so the reason that the boats have the right of way is because especially on a river if you are just drifting you're still moving towards that bridge yeah uh there's no brakes on a boat right so they give the boats the right of way obviously brakes on most cars not all of them flintstone cars maybe not so much uh, but you do have to give, and they had one where the drawbridge operator, I think this was a few years ago, didn't turn on the lights, the warning lights or something, and oh, somebody God. drove right off oh, my God. and into the river. Oh, and that's one of my biggest fears. Didn't make it. I don't like bridges. So if you're approaching a drawbridge, it would be a good idea to know the drawbridges in your area and to be familiar what it looks like when they're up and what it looks like when they're down, just in case the lights aren't on. All right, we've given you some great rules explained today when it comes to most confusing driving situations. We like to explain things. We do, we explain a lot. Uh, Rusi? Thank you very much. If you learned something, we hope that you'll give the show a like. Perhaps even consider subscribing to our channel which will allow you to get notifications each time a new show comes out. And our shows uh, have switched up a little bit. We're now doing Tuesday at 6 a.m. Pacific time, Thursday, 6 a.m. Pacific time. And then we go live on either Saturday or Sunday. So watch for that. Uh, I mentioned to you that our website is menaresosmart.com. We are on iTunes if it's easier for you to listen to the show in podcast form. Yeah. We really are enjoying that. We think you will, too. Uh, after you listen to a few shows, leave a comment or maybe even do a review. Yes. You can leave a review there, too. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. We always do. Uh, that's going to about do it. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And this has been another episode of Men Are So Smart.